Catherine Benel Pegg, thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Uh, it's a privilege and an honour to, to meet you, uh, given your training uh, that I saw you present yesterday here at the Annie Thomas Space Foundation Australian Space Forum. Uh, I did have a question is, what didn't you uh, sort of train in? You really uh, covered all aspects of, uh, of human activity and, uh, and science. Uh, I suppose, yeah, what, what did you find maybe you didn't cover uh, in detail or you m might have missed? Well, thanks for having me and yeah, it's been uh, an absolutely incredible year and a half uh, training with the European Space Agency as part of the Hoppers class. You can see the class patch here nice. and we learned so much. It was super broad. We cut, it covered like sciences, engineering, expeditions, operational activities, languages and humanities and uh, while we learn a lot, there's still so much to learn. Yep. Um, I've just entered what's called pre-mission assignment phase for an astronaut and in that phase there's lots of different activities that astronauts often take part in. Things like uh, flight training, field medical training, getting out and doing expeditions with different sensors like geology expeditions. Um, a lot of time getting into schools and yep. universities and uh, giving insights to industry. So cool. much left to learn. That's part of your the outreach that you're actually doing. What maybe what's your background uh, and what sciences were you involved with before you got into the space program? Sure. So I studied um, space engineering yeah. and also physics yeah. at the undergraduate level and at the master's level. Um, but I've always worked as a space engineer. So I've worked for almost 15 years as a space engineer across about six countries. But I've spent most of the last five years in Australia, which has been fantastic. Um, so I got to work on some of the most compelling missions I could have ever hoped for, things like uh, the Orion vehicle sending humans back to the moon, the yep. Gateway Space Station, part of the International Space Station, and also spent part of my career working with scientists to help them answer the big questions that they're investigating. So creating the, the systems and the technologies to do that. And I suppose that's a, a good question. You're a physicist uh, then by trade. Uh, what's, what science has, is a passion for you? Uh, in that regard, but uh, sort of the semi experiments that you might uh, want to get involved with? Well, for me personally, I was drawn to space through astronomy, um, you know, just looking at the stars and imagining what was out there as a kid, and um, that's what I focused on in my bachelor's degree uh, as a focus for that. Um, but, you know, when I would when astronauts go you know, to the International Space Station, they often go with a, a suite of experiments from their own country. And the breadth of science you can do up there is absolutely yeah. incredible. My mind was blown, um, particularly things like in space medicine. So as an astronaut, you're a medical guinea pig, for want of a better word, um, for your country's medical researchers. Things like osteoporosis or muscle wasting diseases, yeah. things to do with blood flow and eyesight um, and, and immune um, systems, they're all really um, hot topics for investigation up there because in space your body is the ultimate adapter and it adapts those systems for space flight in a way that's similar to some diseases on earth. Um, up there there's also the opportunity to do incredible um, investigations into say material sciences because when you remove the gravity vector you know crystals grow larger and more pure and you can look more closely at them so things like new metal alloys, metal foams, um, pharmaceuticals, horticulture, it's incredible. I mean one of the uh, experiments that was done recently I thought was interesting was developing a new kind of concrete that emits far less carbon dioxide, medical implants and so on so yeah there's there's so much to consider that can be done up there and yeah usually an astronaut would go with a full suite of different kinds. The other one is uh, robotics. Uh, how much were you involved with the robotics? There's a new robot on the ISS uh, as well that's uh, moving around and they say you know astronauts are some of the most expensive uh, employees to have. Um, yeah, what was your sort of touch points with robotics uh, and autonomous systems as well? Yeah absolutely so um, I've enjoyed working as a space systems engineer for satellites that host robotic arms um, and also um, contributing to the the Trailblazer program when I was at the Space Agency. During during the astronaut training, um, we got the first qualifications for operating the, the large space station robotic arm, the Canadarm2. Right. So we first learnt about the space station in virtual reality and then we're operating the robotic arm and learning about its dynamics and kinematics in virtual reality before moving to a simulator and then going through a series of tests and exams guided by astronauts that have actually operated that in space. We, we'd get um, information like, okay, just because 
one particular route might be faster you don't go that way because if there's an astronaut at the end of the arm they don't like being flown backwards you know so it was um it was very interesting and i learned a lot and the future of space robotics is i think really strong to be able to unlock um, greater levels of autonomy and autonomous systems in a trusted way in space particularly around critical infrastructure and humans is something that's yet to be done and once it's unlocked we can explore so much more um, and with more efficiency i suppose the uh, coming back is the outreach that you're doing with kids is great to see i suppose what's your outreach to industry are you been speaking to to sort of heavy industry and large sort of critical sectors as well uh, really to inspire them and, and uh, to get them thinking uh, and innovating a little bit differently uh, absolutely so i've just landed um, back in australia in adelaide uh, a few days ago surrounded by boxes at home and this is my <laughs> first industry event and it's so great to be here right. at this leading event and this is the start of me bringing those insights home that I've learned the knowledge home and also um, opening doors for our sector overseas I was able to do some of that when there we hosted a delegation um, organized by the Australian Space Agency of a number of Australian organizations and the international uh, space agencies are excited to see Australia stepping into human space flight and they're delighted um, at what we could bring to the table as the future it's so much potential absolutely uh, i'll see you in sydney you're doing or maybe what is your program what can the audience look out for over the next few weeks I, you're going to be at the powerhouse in sydney absolutely that i've signed up for uh, yeah anything else that we can look out for oh i'll be across every single state and territory <laughs> over the next few months and i'm really excited to do that to speak to industry to speak to the public particularly to speak to kids yep. to you know excite them about space and stem careers and just dreaming big for themselves um, the schedule will be put up on social media and the australian space agency website website shortly and yeah I look forward to meeting so many people and I'm curious to hear what uh, Australians questions are about space that's for sure. Very good look you're a great ambassador but you're also Australia's first astronaut as well. Catherine Benelpeg thank you so much for joining us today on Australia and Space TV. Thank you for having me it's great.